What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Desire to Inspire. It's your mama's favorite podcast. You're yeah. here taking fucking podcast virginities left and right, bro. This is first <laughs> podcast, too. Let's go. This is three virgins in a row. I'm about to have to be muzzled <laughs> at this rate, bro. Hell yeah. <sighs> anyway, this is Austin. Austin, I'll be honest. I don't know how to say your last name, bro. I meant to ask you in the 15 minutes we've been chopping it up before, but how do you say your last name? Dude, so it's a tongue twister, but it's Esquisath, dude. Try saying that times fast. Yeah, I don't think yeah. I can. I don't even Definitely want to try spelling like I got a that. lisp. I, I can dude. spell it. Dude, that's about it. Saying my last name, dude, I laugh every time. I don't even care. <laughs> All right, cool. At least I don't feel too bad. Yeah, but uh, yeah, this is this is my co-host, Freddie. Freddie, this is What's awesome. going on, man. <laughs> Sorry to be late to the party, brother. <laughs> yeah, unacceptable, bro. Unacceptable. That's why I said this is fucking unprofessional, dude. <laughs> I got a lot of energy today, man. This is actually good because I've been half asleep for the last three hours. I've been going through it. And all of a sudden, I'm awake. This is nice. This is what I needed, boys. There we go, baby. I was taking like a two-hour nap for this, and I woke up. I'm like, all right, I got to get in the zone. I got a podcast to be presented. Oh, yeah, dude. (laughs) Let's go. Oh, yeah, I like it. Um, Dude, I fucking did it again, bro. I forgot to hit the timer. And I literally have start timer in huge letters. (laughs) All right, I got it now. We're going to be good. We're gonna there be we good. go. This only got to be a minute in, so. Yeah, no, we'll be good, man. I'm ready to chop it up. These have, uh, Austin. I don't know if you've watched any of them, but they get more fun and more relaxed, and just like bullshit with the boys and and talk about fucking life and impacting people and all that kind of stuff. Or, like I said last week, touching people. But <laughs> well, that one's not out. Technically, that one's not out right now. Right. I was telling it comes out tomorrow, but uh, he's actually going to that elevate thing at Jr's gym. Oh fuck yeah! So we were talking about it. And I was telling him he's got to go check out Gay Bob's Meats, bro. Yeah. <laughs> get that Mexican mic, baby. You know what? We got to get sponsored by Gay Bob. I was ju- it just clicked. We got to be like, this is sponsored by Gay Bob's <laughs> Meats. <laughs> that'd be what fire, dude. Fun, dude. <laughs> yeah, that'd it be would fire. definitely catch people's attention, that's for sure. A hundred percent. But uh, anyway, I don't really know a ton about Austin. We connected in Colorado. He was here for the Do Hard Thing conference. And okay. uh, we just clicked immediately he was already following the podcast so he's got chopping it up figure we'll have him on hear his story oh, yeah man um so i don't know a lot about your story i know that uh you definitely have overcome some adversity though so if you want to give a little bit of background kind of get into your story we'll just kind of spiral out of control from there man yes sir after it <laughs> yeah so uh i'm austin i'm 21 years old from uh up in minnesota i've been there my whole life i haven't gotten out of there quite yet definitely been thinking about going to Colorado after hanging with this guy for a few days. Oh yeah. After the do hard things conference. Um, yeah, I, I live on a farm up in a small town called Aiken about two hours North of Minneapolis. So I'm not too far away from Canada. It's, uh, it's okay. always just colder than hell snowy all year <laughs> up here. It seems like, and you know, it's, it's like the best time of year right now. It's like 65 degrees, cool weather. It's, it's oh. pretty enjoyable, but bro, you not- be doing ice baths outside in Minnesota. This is going to be the first year I do them outside. So it's going to be Let's like go. a trial and error. Damn. At least I want to play outside, dude. I'm just going to like just fill the tub up, let it freeze up, hammer it out in the mornings and just go Hell out. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's legit. Yeah. Dude, it's going to be wild. I'm so like excited for it. I mean, because I've only done them when it's like, you know, 85, 90 degrees. Right. Out. It's like a good time to mm-hmm. do it. Oh, yeah. I'm doing hard things. It's going to be really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude. So a little bit uh, about my backstory, though, what I love to inspire people by and kind of share my story about is my form of muscular dystrophy that I have. It's a type called Charcot-Marie-Tooth disorder, and it's the most known rare disorder of neurological disorders that uh, are are around or in existence, I should say. Um, But a little bit of uh, backstory on that of how it is, is uh, my dad had it. It's a genetically inherited disease. Um, Your kids have about like a 50-50 shot of getting it. Um, yeah. It was pretty down to both me and my brother. Um, and what it consists of is it basically damages your peripheral nerves, mostly in the legs, which it involves with us. And what that leads to is, you know, a high arch rigid feet, muscle atrophy and wasting. So it's extremely hard to put on and keep muscle and strength up lots of balance issues. Um, you know, decreased sensation in your feet and hands sometimes uh, and lots of mobility issues, just balance, like just walking and learning how to walk when I was little was was a difficult task. You know, a lot of times when you start walking as a little kid, when you have this, you walk like on your toes rather than heel to toe. Um, and, you know, my parents were like really kind of suspicious about their, they're, they're kind of like, well, you know, my dad was like, I had that when I was little, but not as aggressive as this, like we need to get something figured out. 
because they didn't have technology back then to even know what he had. And when they took me and my dad down to the University of Minnesota, they did like studies on us and confirmed that's what it was um, and told us about it, kind of said, you know, it's non-curable. You can't really do anything about this. It, it's only progressive over time. You know, we don't know what this is going to lead to. Um, so from there, uh, we just kind of took off and I was just a little kid. Just, I didn't really know how to take it. I dealt with going through hours and hours of PT. It didn't do nothing for me. I wore casts on my feet all the way up to like my knees looking like I had broken legs walking around like elementary school, uh, you know, um, custom form braces that were just, you know, not good for me. Like they break playing on playground at recess all the time, just to try and be involved with the kids there. Mm -hmm. I was introduced to wrestling growing up when I was little and, you know, when you don't have the strength or balance or, you know, anything in that area of your body, just to be able to walk upstairs or walk in general or run or lift weights, you know, how do you expect to wrestle? And my dad was one of those like hard collar or blue collar, hard work ethic kind of people. And my mom was raised around that too. And they were just like, you know, no excuses. You're going to learn how to do this. Like this is what mm -hmm. you're going to do. And wrestling was extremely tough for me, but I also fell in love with it right away. Like when I started out, I was just there to play games with the kids and just, be how you know just be a kid and enjoy yeah. it once I got older I started to like fall in love with the process of it even though I wasn't very good at it and it eventually led me to the weight room and I started getting around some very knowledgeable people and that's how I came to Zach at Zach home and uh it kind of led up to what it is now but when I started getting into it I realized I couldn't even do an air squat or a lunge or a step up without like falling over at all I had to use like a squat rack to catch me and I had people just looking at me in the gym and they're just like like what's wrong with this guy and and that led to a lot of insecurities that I had over time but I was so just I was so dedicated to building up my body getting strong like all these athletes I was seeing as a kid whether it was NFL MLB or wrestlers and uh pretty soon um I, I just played the victim mindset a little bit with it I was only in there just to bench press just because that was my best thing or work arms like you do when you start out in the gym like mm -hmm. everybody like, talks about neglecting legs that was me as like yeah. a greater <laughs> and uh Eventually, I told myself I need to learn how to squat. Like I'm sitting here with like a decently built upper body for a skinny guy, and I got like just literally skin and bones for legs. And I was going through crazy injuries. I couldn't stay healthy. Um, mm -hmm. I was blowing up my kneecap, and just every other year, I think it was for a couple of years, it was just not good. So I was like, I need to strengthen up my legs. I'm gonna learn how to do this. So I started out. I was kind of a bitch about it. I was actually doing it in a Smith machine but not in like a good way or effective way. It was just there just to load up a bunch of weight in the bar and act like I was cool being able to squat. And I actually just came to a realization of a buddy. He was like, dude, this isn't doing anything for you. Get in the damn squat rack. And mm -hmm. I finally did my junior year of high school. Um, I taught myself how to squat. I was up to about like a 155 squat uh, at the time. And, you know, I led into wrestling. It took me like six years just to get on like varsity, let alone become a captain that year because of the leadership yeah. I had just leading people into the weight room and showing my struggles and being vulnerable with them. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just, it all kind of just came full circle with me. I was able to wrestle in the state tournament uh, my senior year, which was like my dream as a kid. That's awesome. So, so I got to wrestle in the state tournament tournament there in the team portion that we had we made it as a team for like the first time in 11 years and I got to be in it oh hell yeah um, and then going through that me into the Twitter space here and once I got coaches and that were able to kind of dig deeper into the root of my problems with my lifting and my mobility issues and weaknesses I'm on my way to squat in 315 in a couple of weeks when I was like dude doctors were telling me <laughs> and my dad like you're not even supposed to be able to hardly walk let alone wrestle and weightlift and my dad's amazing he's been doing it for like 35 years they're like you shouldn't be allowed to do this i'm sitting here just proving the odds wrong all the time damn bro that's awesome that's Thanks. a fucking awesome story i um i have a few cousins um aunts and uncles uh that have myotonic muscular dystrophy mm -hmm. and so i grew up um and i it's actually crazy because one of my biggest things that i want to do in life is like get tested to see if i have it because my father never tested in the way like insurance works. It's like your father has to test to see if he is because if he's not, then like you said, then it's not likely you would. Um, but unfortunately, he's passed away. And so like one thing that my sister and I want to do is get tested to see if we have it since a lot of my cousins do on my dad's side. And um, it's just one of those things where we talk about it, we think about it, but we're like, uh, yeah, we'll get to it. And we push it off. And so it's... Uh, I mean, hearing your story is amazing because I remember playing baseball and basketball and all these things with my cousin growing up and he had myotonic dystrophy and you could see like where some things were a challenge and all of that, but he persevered through it as long as he could. And um, still, I mean, 
working all the time, doing all the stuff, but just didn't pursue like sports anymore. Um, so that's amazing that you, you did that. You got to States. Um, but what do you, what do you think being in the weight room and like going through the motions of stuff and seeing how difficult it was for you? Was it just the motivation? Like, I want this to happen. So I'm going to do it. Or what kept you going underneath the bar to do it when everybody's telling you it's not possible? Um, just kind of knowing where I wanted to be. I was thinking back to my goals. Like I'd, you know, I was huge into college wrestling and football and I'd see these guys just loading up like 500 pounds on a squad. I'm like, okay, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's the motivation I needed, but I also had a lot of, uh, like good people are in my corner. You know, I had a lot of teammates that were like, I was leading them to the weight room, but they're also pushing me in there. And I also had an athletic director. His name is Jason Klein. He like was a college uh, football coach for a D line. And he was even like baffled at what I had going on. He didn't even know right away. And once he found out like the deeper root of it and saw me struggle through it all. And he's the one that got me into my fitness journey. Um, he was just like, dude, you can do this. Like you can do anything. And him having, having him in there every single morning at 5.00 AM was like, just what kept me going. And like, he pushed me a lot. And if I didn't have him or anybody of uh, my other teammates in there in the off season, I wouldn't even be sitting here in front of you guys. Damn. Dylan, I don't think we can hear you, brother. I see, your, I see your mouth moving and I want you to be a part of this conversation. <laughs> All right. Can you hear me now? Yep. All right. It's probably coming through this one because I'm just giving yeah. up on this one. I don't know what's going on with it. But uh, no, I was just saying, hell yeah. But I had a feeling you couldn't hear me. And I don't know why. It also looks like I'm like delivering a scary story in this room. Right it now. does. <laughs> it looks like you're holding a flashlight. Under, yeah. Under I have these lights. Dude, it's super like Lumino today. So I have like my lights on, but it's like the camera's not adjusted. And I just look like I'm out here telling ghost stories. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that's funny. So is there, um, how did you get led? Cause you're in, um, you're going to JR, JR Smith as, as he goes by, um, you're going to his gym for the evolve collab Elevate. with them. Elevate. Oh. How did you get involved in that community? And how'd you get involved with, um, the gentleman is any out in Chicago or where's your buddy at that you guys went to Colorado for? Oh, Zach, he's in Indy. Zach in Indy, how did you get involved with those two groups um, to now keep you motivated doing the things you are? So when I was 15, I came across Zach's page on Instagram. I just remember seeing this like just Jack tatted up dude, like repping 405, like it was nothing. And he was like squatting six, 700 pounds. And I'd never seen anything like it. And then I started following this guy just to get his daily content. Like he was giving out so much free stuff. And I was like, these are just like gold nuggets here. Like this is what I, I am need to keep progressing. Zach's lifting, you know, to be strong, like load up the bar with as much weight as you could was another big motivator for me. But, um, you know, I found Zach through Instagram. I just came across his page and uh, I followed him. And pretty soon it led to me following, you know, Jay Azeltine, Dylan Spina, Jeremy Clevenger, all the, like the OG guys that were really a part of like when IVB started. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, from there, I, I took a little bit of time off because I was focused on wrestling training. So I found a lot more trainers. I followed through social media with wrestling. But when I circled back to Zach's page around like his strongman days in like 2018, 2019, when I was finishing up high school, I saw a post that he put, you know, sometime around there. It said like, hey, I'm a lot cooler on Twitter. Go follow me over here. And I had, hadn't had Twitter since I was like 12, 13 years old. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to try it out and I hated it. But when I started seeing Zach put up more and more content and seeing how more authentic or personal you could be on Twitter, it just took off from there. And it helped me a lot through college and just seeing that. And eventually I got involved with Elevate through Matt Moore, who runs that. Mm -hmm. I've been following Matt ever since he joined IVB. Like I had saw him and his brother Mitch just going there on the weekends. And then pretty soon I'd, I'd followed him for a long time. And Matt had put out a tweet like at the new year saying, hey, I got like five free calls today. Who wants to get on? And I immediately snatched the opportunity because I wanted to just get to know him more. I, I didn't even think it'd lead to me being like a, a, one of his best friends now, but we yeah. got on Oh, we chopped it up for like at least an hour. I told him like everything I've been through from struggles with muscular dystrophy, my wrestling days, lifting, what I want out of myself. And, and he was like, dude, you fit the vibe. Like you got to join this new community that me and Joey Yoheim are doing. And I was like, all right, I guess. And he was just like, you need to share out your story as well. I'm like, mm -hmm. really? You think people are going to take inspiration from this? He's like, dude, hundred percent. Like, <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Like that was before I really like hit my confidence, my stride this year. Yeah. You know, I had confidence, but I was also like, dude, who's going to take inspiration from a guy that can't even like, he barely can squat 225 or can't even deadlift 500. And he's like, bro, don't worry about that. He was like, just overcoming what you have to just to be able to get up to par with what everybody else can do is an inspiration enough, let alone overcoming more, more and more each day. Yeah. So 
Um, eventually I got involved with Elevate, like right at the very beginning when there was only like 10 guys in there. We were chopping up on bi-weekly calls, just hyping each other up. And that's where I really hit a stride sharing out my story and building my Twitter. Um, and I built it up like crazy um, to what it is now. And now we're just, me and Matt are just super good friends. We get on calls all the time and we just always talk how we can expand the brand and and just keep going from there. And, uh, you know, me and Matt was involved with Zach. That's how I stayed close to Zach. Mm-hmm. With, you know, meeting him and eventually led him. Zach told me back in March when I, um, I met him back in uh, person in March and he was like, dude, come to the do hard things conference. I'm like, the what? <laughs> and he's telling me about it. He's like, dude, it's going to be legendary. You got to be there. So I was like, sure. So I bought my ticket that day and I was like, I'm just going to send it and go for it. And it was one of the best decisions I ever made, dude. Fuck, I really fucked up. Dylan I told, told you. Me and it was with like two weeks left before this was going to happen. He's like, bro, I'm going, I'm going back to Denver. Like I'm making, making it happen. I'm going to do the, um do hard things all this come 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 and i'm like uh, okay i don't know what the hell this is dylan and then man i'm talking to the more brothers i'm talking to you i'm talking to dylan and i'm like i really fucked up by not going to that dude yeah. there's all next year dude. it's gonna be so awesome next year it's like this was the first year it was pretty packed in there but it's gonna be like double the amount of people mm-hmm. this can be yeah. so in the network i was telling austin before you got on too you're gonna get a more hands-on approach with everybody because like when we go visit Donatelli, he's basically damn near with Zach every day now. Like you're gonna get like a more hands-on approach anyway than you would have at the conference. Like you're gonna, mm-hmm. especially because like you'll be with the two dudes he works closest with now, and then me who's already worked with him there. Like you're gonna have a real good in for a guy who's never even met the guy. <laughs> it's oh, gonna be yeah. dope. And what's crazy is like he's gonna treat you like you fucking own him your whole life. Like it's just how he is, man. So. Oh. Yeah, I got to meet this guy because um, I've heard nothing but good things. And every single person I have gives me another reason on why I want to connect with him, why I want to meet him. And not only that, but follow his content and stuff like that, too, because he is an inspiration. He is doing amazing things that are motivating people like us um, to voice our opinion and not be scared to put things out on social media, to not be scared of what people are going to say or what people are going to do or any of that. Because like you said, like, who's going to find my story? inspirational i i thought that with dylan and i remember the first time we jumped on this and i was like bro i don't want to talk about this i don't want to post this on my facebook none of that and he was like people need to hear it and like my whole motive in life because of like things that have happened is like i have a story i need to tell it and the story of the people that can't tell it anymore because they're not here i need to be able to carry that on and so it's given me the motivation and we've been doing this eight months or something like that and the connections that I've made through social media, the conversations I'm having and the people that reach out that are like, man, your guys' content or you're this, you're that is really helping me. You guys, even if it started walking around the block every day, like you got me out of the house more, I'm walking more, I'm feeling better. It's like, fuck yeah, it's those little things that add up to the big things. And it's like, do one more of that rep or do one more of whatever it is and it's going to lead to something bigger. Um, And so it's cool how much of an impact it can have and truly like how many people of our age and our caliber are trying to make this difference and do things on their own. That's the craziest part is like you say our age and I know you're talking about me and you, but like these dudes, him, our 20, Joey, these dudes are all 21 years old. Yeah. It's like, they're like, Oh, that was like when I didn't have the confidence or like, I'm just now starting to show. I'm like, just now, like, I wish I had started just now at 21, bro. Like I was around these people and like, they were saying it, but like, they didn't have the same level there right now either, which is the craziest part is like what you guys are creating and what you're going to be is like very infancy stages right now. Like it's awesome for what it is, but like when you're in on that ground floor, man, it's going to be insane where you're at at 20. Like you're going to be hosting conferences and shit like that. And it's going to be like, this is like where it all started. Cause I can look back and like, Zach's the only reason I'm even in the fitness industry as it stands. Like, he's the only reason like I even felt like I had something to say. And so like for you guys, like he's that same thing, but eventually you're going to be like looked at that way because you're starting so young and it's dope like to be able to like see you guys in this early stage. Yeah, hundred percent. And I'm blessed that I was able to have like gotten in with the group that I have as soon as I have like Mm -hmm. looking like I called Zach since he opened up the doors IVB and seeing what he's brought in the online game with just inspired us so much more. And seeing where the levels that we can take it to is just crazy. And when it comes to sharing out your own story, um, you just got to realize you have each, everybody's story is individualized. No person has the exact same story. And when you learn to not sandbag that, obviously you don't want to live too close to it. But when you learn to not sandbag that story, you really learn the impact that you can make with people. 
and it just really inspired me. Once I started getting those DMs like once a week lately saying like, Hey, I love your story. I'd love to connect more with you. Or, Hey, you, your story inspired me just to get in the squat rack. Or I find people more and more that struggle with the same kind of stuff I do. It may not be the exact same situation, but they're also like, dude, it's, it's just inspiring. And I keep hearing that. I'm like, man, I really was meant to share out my story, even as much oh, as yeah. I myself, it's yeah, not yeah. Gonna do anybody any good. Like, like, well, you know, everybody else my age, that's normal, that lifts as much as I do and does what I do, uh, does what I do as far as gym goes like they're squatting 405 plus they're deadlifting over 500 benching 315 and I'm over here like I'm just trying to catch up with you guys they're like nah like you're, you're right up there with us yeah <laughs> yep how um since you've gained that confidence um I'd ask how you gained it but I mean your story alone of what you shared already shows like the big impact of it and what it led to it now that you're at this point where you enjoy sharing it. You're confident in it. You're happy as fuck with the communities that you're surrounded with. What have you transitioned personally besides spreading it on social media to make that impact to the next person, to influence the next person that might be doubting themselves or might not have that coach that's pushing them and giving them that courage that they need? How are you impacting those people after going through your story and your journey so far? Um, just leading by example and putting out more content to the next person that may need to see that you know like mm -hmm. think how can I affect the next person when it comes to putting out content on Twitter or just little things in my life that I can do around me I mean even for the small town I live in of 2,500 people someone could still take inspiration just from me doing one little thing for them so mm -hmm. I just always think it's the little things that make the biggest difference that's yep. a small town right 2,500 people <laughs> I'm curious like what is I don't know if like it's very apparent what you do like or like kind of the I'm sure the things you do are not normal for a town of 2,500 people. Like do you get pushback or like, what is kind of like their point of view on like what you do? So the people that do know what I do, they always give me that confused look like Twitter, online fitness coaching, like yeah. what, like this just sounds like a scam. Like all these people, like you're just going to meet random people to go and <laughs> three, four days. I'm like, yeah, I am. And they're like, whatever, bro, you can have that. And they just don't understand personally because they haven't been there. It's just something so new to them. And it was so new to me six months ago. Um, so I wouldn't say I get pushback, but it takes people a while to understand it. Um, there's some people that definitely support me, like the family that got me into going to church this year, like they fully support me. They understand it a hundred percent. They're like, keep doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, don't stop doing that. You, you look like you're making good progress. We can just tell like you're progressing in every area of your life. Not just when you go to church with us on Sunday and you seem a lot happier, like we see it in all areas going through. Um, so I definitely would say I get a little bit of pushback from people. Like, you know, there's always those people that have the insecurities of like, they're, they're kind of jealous that you're doing something with your life and they're not doing anything with theirs productive where they're kind of like, Oh, he's off doing this or whatever. I'll look at this post that he made. Like you always get that kind of backlash yeah. that tells me, I know I'm doing the right thing. If they're, yeah. gonna, it's, that's just what I tell myself. And if I, and if they want to message me about it or have a conversation, so be it. If not the block button, so easy to do. Yep. yep. That's a fact. It is funny though. Cause like, Growing up, people are like, don't talk to strangers on the internet, don't do this and that. And we really are like traveling across the country to like hang out with people we've never met before. So like I kind of get like where the weird shit's coming from. I understand it. Yeah, like my I was the first born of my parents. So when I told my mom, like, hey, I'm going down to Indiana, and she's like, What are you doing in Indiana? I'm like, I'm going to this gym I've been following for years. And she was like, You're just driving 11 hours to go to a gym i'm like yeah pretty much and she was like well who are you meeting down there like i want their name their address their phone numbers like all this stuff and just she's just freaking out i'm like mom it's all right i don't know like, if my parents like don't love me or something but i moved to <laughs> indy for like six months and they didn't question anything they're like what are you doing i'm like well i'm going to this unpaid internship i'm gonna work at a gym and they're like oh okay and i wasn't like into fitness then so i don't know what the fuck they maybe they just don't love me man <laughs> They didn't ask for an address. They didn't Tommy ask for T. names. Tommy T's like, he's out the house. I don't give a fuck. Well, now my dad fucking follows Zach. So he's all, he's all in. Yeah. That's oh, a. Man. Go ahead. Now I'm just like thinking of Zach because like I have so many different thoughts about him just because I don't like personally know him and I only get these bits and pieces and drops and then see what he posts on social media. Um, but as he, Mike went down there to start the, or to like take over the gym for him. Right. So he's not as hands-on in the gym or is he still. So when I first went out, there was like a year into the gym being open. Okay. And he was like, this was like his very, 
like kind of where he was just starting online coaching because I used to like design his ebooks and stuff. So like all his programming was wrapped up in a book and we just put them out online. And that's what he was doing basically. And okay. he would host like seminars at the gym where he would bring people in. But people were already at that point traveling from other states to come see him. But he was like a world record powerlifter for his weight at the time. So it was like mm-hmm. he had this stuff. And then like just slowly he just evolved over time. So like he went to strongman. And then like once COVID hit, he knew basically like the gym's not going to be as sustainable. Like people just aren't going to the gym. So that's kind of when he started doing his retreats. He felt like other people needed his guidance. And then like, so that's kind of what taken him away from the gym. So like Mm. IVB is still very much his. And like, I feel like that's always going to be his baby, but it's just not where he spends as much of his time. Because I think he knows at this point, he has more impact in other places. Yeah. And Dude, I got those he, ebooks though, Dylan, man. I, I got like every one of them on my phone still from what I used to run in high school. Oh yeah, bro. Scroll to the last page, dude. You'll find my social media. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it still exists, the old social media accounts. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's probably the same link. I just changed my name. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Those ebooks were legendary. I remember buying them for like 20 bucks. Like they were so affordable for so a college. cheap, dude. I had them forever and I've just, I started running them and some of my friends were like, these programs are wild. I'm like, yeah, we need to keep bringing these back. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> what do you do now to, uh, to stay intact on the mental side? Do you focus on that at all outside of the gym or you use gym as your mental kind of like therapy to stay happy, stay positive, stay motivated through all this shit that we call life. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one of the factors in play but nature is where I've really found my niche because getting in touch with faith this last year I realized nature is where I found God the most and Zach helped me with that because there was times where I just wasn't feeling God's presence and I told Zach I was like dude I can't feel God's presence right now like I'm having a tough time finding he's like well bro where do you find him the most I'm like usually in the woods he's like then go there so going there more has really helped Mm. um, I work in surgery And, you know, it sometimes gets to be a little bit of a like intense environment, you know, with the doctor some days and just sometimes you got to release and my, my release, if it isn't being in the gym, lifting weights in my basement, it's going out in the woods for a while, or it's maybe riding my snowmobile, just squeezing that throttle a little bit, feeling hell yeah, (laughs) jumping some drifts. I'm going to ride a snowmobile. That sounds fucking cool. Yeah. I wish we had that out here in uh, Texas, but uh, we do not. Uh, we probably got it in Colorado, just not right where I'm at. So <laughs> maybe I should go figure that out. Yeah, dude, you guys got to try snowmobile and it's unreal. It's like, an oh, therapy. yeah, I went snowmobiling in Colorado. Now that you brought it up, um, probably like four or five years ago. And there, when you get to the top of mountain, there's like yellow ropes and they're like, don't go beyond the yellow ropes, blah, blah, blah. And there's people going past the yellow fucking ropes. And my uncle looks at me, he's like, bet you won't go past the ropes. And I was like, they told us not to. He's like, come on, pussy. I bet you won't. And I was like, mm. <laughs> well, yeah. I got buried. So that's why you were so <laughs> so my snowmobile literally just stood straight up. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been out to the mountains of Colorado yet, dude. But I just I hear they're wild. With rides out there. I mean, like six feet plus of snow. Like I got people that go out there all the time. And I watch videos of like the guys that get blown into like secluded areas. I'm like, damn, like, I really want to go do this, but do I want to get stuck, like, every five feet? Like, I'll be getting my work done all the long. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, that'd be yep. dope, but I don't own a snowmobile, so I'll be real fucked if uh, I get stuck. <laughs> oh, bro, you're strong as hell. You can lift that sled up. You just give I a couple. Know, of man. I look a lot stronger than I am, I'll tell you that. That it's picture you posted show, on, man. that Twitter picture you posted today, bro, you were scrawny. <laughs> bro, did you see my response? I said, How, let's see a picture of you as 17, bitch. All right, well, that's fucked. We don't got to talk about me right now. <laughs> No, nah, I was tiny though. I was tiny, dude. I was probably 140 pounds at this same height. It's wild. Your but, head uh, looked a lot bigger. My what? Your head looked a lot bigger. It's because I had stage. hair, bro. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, um, I'm going down that route too one day, I'll probably be bald in like 10 years. Both both sides of my family are bald, dude. So I'm gonna rock, rock out that long hair then as long as possible, bro. Yep. Because oh, yeah. I went. I used to have long hair and it was fine. You know, I had no problems. And as soon as I went short, I'm like, ooh, 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 this is rough. (laughs) Dude, like I've had thoughts about going back to the length of like Freddy's, but then I talked to Barefoot Will about that on the phone. He's like, bro, don't you dare cut that. He's like, keep it rolling. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Just take it as long as you can, man. You know, tomorrow's not promised with your hair. (laughs) Take it from me. (laughs) 
yeah, <laughs> fuck life. It's not like it, that's promised. Your hair is not. Promised. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I tell I tell Dylan all the time that I'll go broke before I go bald because there ain't no way this big ass acorn head can uh <laughs> shave it. Oh bro, when you're jacked, dude, who cares? It looks good. <laughs> I gotta get like a beard or something. I feel like people that grow out like mm-hmm. beards, like you got a good beard. So if you go bald, you're you're set. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, dude. And my dad always says because he's bald, he's like, best part about being bald is you can never have a bad hair day. That's a fact. <laughs> it's true, dude. I save a lot of time, I save a lot of money. It's right. real nice. It's real nice. But uh, we've you've brought up a couple times now, uh, like you getting back into like faith and religion and stuff. Was it something that was kind of? I feel like we talk about this on every podcast now. I know like, that's why it wild, comes up I with everybody it. now. I love it. But um, were you like always kind of? I you said like family got you into it. Like were you always in church, or is it kind of something new? So I was baptized, born and raised in the Catholic Church. I was kind of that cliche story of like you know you're always kind of to go every Sunday regardless to your Sunday school and then just go to church mm-hmm. but it all felt repetitive and it didn't feel personable and I just didn't know how to feel um it just really wasn't for me as far as you know being that arrogant teenager you don't want to read the bible or pray or you know you just right. you want to church zone out picking your spot on the wall and staring at it that's pretty much what it came down to but at the same time I always felt like I was called to something more like I knew God was out there um, he wasn't too far away. And I, I tried digging into the Bible, but I can never stay consistent with it because I just didn't have the system that I have now. And uh, the priest I had in place just wasn't wasn't up to par, man. It was like, you know, we'd have our Wednesday youth group or confirmation classes and halftime what we talk about was his depression and suicide days. And it was like, this is just depressing in itself. Damn. I'm not here to listen to that. And not every time was like that, but still it just wasn't getting me anywhere. And I just felt really let down. And once I got into college everybody knows how the freshman phase goes it just you fall into the uh, sure do smoking phase it was just Mm -hmm. like you know that's what i live for on the weekends but i soon came to a realization when i started seeing just those spur of moment like desperation prayers being answered i knew i had to commit to something more and once i got through my you know my program for surgical technology and i could just kind of chill a little bit and coast into my job i just felt like what's next for me And I, I just, I prayed a lot for, you know, Bible study group, getting into the church more, but I didn't want to go back to the Catholic church. So right around the new year, I started going to a church called heritage about an hour away from me. It's just like a trader's point type church in Indiana. Um, and I had this uh, family actually, he was one of my, he was one of my wrestling coaches and for the moment, I hadn't talked to the guy in like two years. He was my insurance guy. And the only time I talked to him in the past was like when I crashed my car in college (laughs) and, uh, I was praying for a Bible study group because I just, I couldn't understand it. I didn't know how to apply it to my life. And he like, out of nowhere was like, Hey, I need you to help me run this meat raffle. Like, I don't know if you guys know what those are, but it's where you go like a hole in the wall bar as like a fundraiser for like local sports teams. And we had to help like basically sell these raffle tickets. So they give away free meat. If you like get your number drawn pretty much. And at the okay. end, dude, like you want to come to a Bible study and have dinner at my house. I'm like, all right, prayer answered right there. Yep. Like, just felt really good. And I started going to Bible study every Sunday, but, um, when we had the Bible study, it was always related to the church service. And I'm like, well, I might as well just check out the church. We'll try it out. And I got a lot of backlash. I always had that like thought of well, what are my parents going to think if I'm going to a different type of church or not going to Catholic church. But I soon realized that like, it's not their choice. Like I'm me, they have their faith. I have mine. Just support me kind of is what I told them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got involved with the church, uh, went there. I got in touch with the pastor and he actually heard my story for a couple hours. And he actually had me speak at the church about like our struggles and stories in front of everybody, which was cool. So like three months into being at this church, I get to speak at it, which really felt good. And then like having the worship music going and every message felt like he was talking to me one-on-one just felt really good. So it's just, it, it just kept progressing and snowballing. I'm like, this is where I was meant to be. Like, this is what I needed to find at the perfect time. Yeah, that's awesome. So you're traveling pretty much now, like an hour just to go? Yeah, every Sunday. We we all just pile in the car and we just go and, you know, we get brunch after and hang out. It's just a great time. Like, it's so worth it. I mean, I don't care about gas prices. It's just, it's so much better in person than watching online. It's mm-hmm. just way more authentic, intentional. Yeah. The pastor always makes you feel welcome. He's always asking about you and just being intentional. Like we talk about on Twitter, being authentic and intentional. He brings that to the table every single week. Yeah, that's that's huge. I've actually I'm not going every week, but I've basically been doing the same thing because I've been going to Peak City like since we went. Yeah. So I was like, well, like I actually this is the first place like I actually feel like welcomed and invited and like everybody actually it, it just didn't feel like I feel like a lot of times it can feel real like standoffish and like you're not a part of it. 
And that was the first time I felt like, oh, like I don't even go here and everybody's like welcoming me. So rather than watch online, I've just been like every other week I'll drive the hour. I'm like, it's only an hour one way. My aunt lives there. So I'm like, we'll get same as you like, let's get brunch or something afterwards. We can connect that way. So it's definitely been cool. You're right. Like in person is completely different than online. Yeah. And being that it was so like, just like you say, not intentional and you kind of didn't feel welcome. That's how I felt in the Catholic church. It Same, was, man. It was one of the things where, you know, like when I'd walk in, like you had to dress up, like it was like, you almost were yep. trying to put on a show for people. And yep. when I really learned about going to this church, the family that I go with that I've mentioned, I asked them, I'm like, well, what do I wear? Or like, what's it like there? And they're like, no judging. They're like, you could be Elon Musk, like one of the richest people in the world walking in there in a suit, or you could be a homeless guy off the street with a bottle of booze in your hand, you're gonna get treated the exact same. Like, who mm -hmm. cares? You can wear a hat, you can dress just like you just woke up if you want, you're gonna get treated the same. And that really took me a little bit to adjust to because I was always under like that habit of take your hat off when you walk in there, which just yep. Told yep. you dress up in a nice shirt, you go there, you sing the songs, do the same routine over and over. And it just felt repetitive. It just didn't feel like it was very intentional. But when you can go and hear a message that you can resonate with for your whole life in itself, it's like, wow, this message is speaking to me. That's when you know the Holy Spirit's within you. And that's what you're meant to hear. And I'm not mm -hmm. a Catholic church because, you right. know, I still go there every now and then a family wants me to, but it's not something that I really like. I'm committed to the, the Christian faith and I'm actually getting rebaptized in like a month or so. Oh, yeah. yeah, I remember you almost got baptized here because you didn't want to wait it out. But yeah. I, I, it's probably better that you waited out for your church. If like that's that's where you call home and like you've got that connection to. I think it's good that you waited it out. Yeah. And I had one of my friends back there um, that wanted to get baptized with me like the same day. So I was just kind of like, all right, yeah. I, 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 wait, cause I don't want to like go back there. It's like, well, I already got baptized. Like, sorry. You know? Yep. Yep. Yeah. My, my dad. That. My dad was Catholic and my mom was Methodist. And so we, I always like growing up would go to Catholic because I went to a Catholic school all the way up until high school. And then after high school, I would go with my mom when she would go here and there, she wouldn't go all the time, but the Methodist church was so much more welcoming than the Catholic was. And then when I came out here, um, I met one of my good buddies, Gene, and he was like, come to church with me. He goes every Sunday. And it was the same situation when I finally was like, okay, I'm going to go with you. This is a weekend, this and that we go. And I called him. I was like, Hey, I was like, what am I supposed to wear? Like, am I dressing up? And he was like, no, man. He's like, whatever's in right now you can wear. He's like, you can get real dressed up, whatever. And I went and it was just such a different experience, but it hit me in such a way that I won't ever be able to explain because again, it was welcoming. It was inviting the message they were doing, the way they were communicating it, all of this stuff. And so we were just there um, a few weeks ago and um, I was standing there and I was like, I would love for my mom to come here to see what she would think and just see like what her take would be on it because it's vastly different than the traditional style, even of the Methodist church um, in terms of how the service uh, goes, how they preach it, the instruments they play and stuff. So it's really cool. Um, but I think it is just finding that environment or that place that you feel comfortable or you feel like it's family, it's welcoming um, because I think that's why a lot of people get scared off of religion is because not only is it like super pressed on us when we're young and we're like, oh, we're going to do it. But we go into these environments when we're young and we're like, this is like a stale environment. It doesn't feel good. Like, why am I coming here? And so I just wish that everybody would give it another chance when they get to make their own decisions and they're living this life on their own outside of their mom and dad's house, because, um, it's vastly different now the way I see it than I did when I was younger. And that's because I found that place where I feel welcomed and it feels good to actually go to it. I think the biggest part about it is like, as a kid, it's like you just do whatever your parents do. But like, I feel like everything else, like we're taught like to always like, you know, be open-minded, this and that. But like when it comes to religion, it's like, this is how I was raised. This is how you're going to be raised. This is that. Like, I feel like when I have kids, like I don't want to ever push my beliefs on them. Like, I would rather be like, here's your options. Like, go check them all out. Like, see, because everybody, like you said, like, it's not like you're shitting on uh, Catholicism. It's like, mm -hmm. for somebody else, like, that might be what works for them. But I don't know how something's going to hit you. Like, we should just go into it and, like, look into all these things. Because at the same time, like, you're not going to know, like, what's true and what's not either, unless you look at every angle of it. Like, you can't just look at one side and make like, yep, that's it. That's the one. Yeah. 100%. And 
for me, like my grandparents uh, on my mom's side, my grandma was like, she's extremely Catholic. And, you know, I got quite a bit of backlash when I told her, like, I wasn't really going to the Catholic church anymore. It just didn't feel like home. Like this new church, it, this is what I feel is home for me. You know, I got backlash on it. But at the end of the day, it was just one of the things where you just have to say, just support me. At least I have faith. You know, a lot of people in today's world don't even have faith. They don't yeah. follow. And I was just telling them, you got to just support me in this situation. And, and it, it led to a little bit of a debate about stuff. But we just know now it's just not something we really bring up or talk about. Um, and like you said, it's just no, there's no like kind of one size fits all. But for me, my biggest thing is as long as I have a relationship with Jesus, it just that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I felt like home to me because i could really really take like say a parable that jesus talks about in the bible they'll take that and turn it into a whole sermon and then it relates back to my life i'm like okay hey, that's what i need i need these kind of things to compare to what how you need to live rather than just here's like a set of prayers set of songs a couple of things we we talk about and it's just like done and over with mm -hmm. yeah i like that a lot i uh i definitely could go more um but I notice every day that it's progressing and it, I am getting like closer. My faith is increasing, but again, I don't think that you have to go every single week um, in order for you to have a connection with God. Um, and so some people have different beliefs on that, um, but everybody has their own relationship with him and how they um, communicate with him and stuff like that. But like you said, as long as you're keeping it top of mind, as long as you're doing things um, to keep that rolling, uh, it's only going to keep growing and it's going to influence you to do more and more of it. So that's what I've been realizing in the last like two months, Dylan and I, I think both of ours has increased tenfold. Um, and we talk about it a lot more. Like you said, the last three podcasts, four podcasts, it's got brought up on. Um, and it just seems like everybody's, everybody's a lot happier that brings it up. The people yeah. that are talking about it have some sort of like glow or spark or something about them. And it's like, ah, starting to I see like talking about it here but it's honestly the one thing that i feel the weirdest talking about everywhere else like whether that be with friends with family like on twitter anywhere else i just i don't know i think it's a lot to do with like just past shit that like i haven't dealt with maybe i don't know but i i don't know i just feel like it's something that i don't really have like i feel like i don't have authority to talk about it which is a dumb thing for me to say, but that's really how I feel like. I feel like, who are you to talk about this? Like, look at this thing you do or that thing you do. You know what I mean? So I yeah. like being able to talk about it here. And for me, I have that same insecurity too. I sometimes think, well, why am I bringing up Jesus to the friends that, you know, I see every now and then that I used to party and drink with all the time, live yeah. for the weekend with, you know, I sometimes think, well, how are they going to think of me? But then I always think back to just, you know, don't be, don't be ashamed of that. Just be unashamed to, preach what you know is the truth and what's going to help people in the end. Um, it, and it took a while. Like you say, there's maybe some shit very deep down that you need to dig a little deeper in. I've done that and it's still work in progress, but I do get that little bit of insecurity of like yeah. who am I gonna be tweeting about this, talking about this or bring it up in a conversation. But then I just, I ask God for a little bit of presence within me and ask about it. And, and it comes through to me and it always, it always seems to work out. Um, you know, you don't always have the best reactions from people, but you can't, you can't hold that against them. That's just who they are. And you can't expect them to change. Um, yep. Only Jesus can do that for them. <laughs> yep. Like Dylan, like you always preach about, he brought up how people he used to party with, do all this stuff with, might not look at him when he says what he's saying and be like, oh, okay. Um, you always preach how you can know somebody in high school or you can know somebody in college and they have this image of you that'll never get out of your head. It doesn't matter how much you change. They remember that because that's when you were close to them or that's when you hung out with them. Um, but just like life is changing every single day and evolving into something new, so are we. And so the person that we were yesterday, a year ago, 10 years ago, isn't the person that we are today. Um, hopefully the majority of the time we learn, we grow, we develop and we become better human beings. Um, but again, just like if you're not keeping anything top of mind, you're not going to improve on any of it. And so I think that's important too, is not letting us um overshadow our beliefs or our thoughts or even the things that we're doing in life because what are people thinking about the old me or the me that used to do this or that and so we just got to stay focused on the present and be like yeah that's why i can talk about all this shit though is because i lived and i learned and yeah. now i'm smarter and now i can hopefully preach to people and be like hey this is what i did but here's where i'm at now and this is the, re the direction i'm going and make an impact in life um and that's what i try and focus on every single day is just being a better version of me and truly living in the moment instead of wishing for this and wishing for that or all oh, this happened to me 
um, because only good's going to come from it when you when you stop putting such a strain on it. Yeah, and being that light in people's life too, being a hype man for him, I really learned that from Zach and Matt Moore was just like, you have to really like just make people feel good. Find something that you know about them that would get them to feel good because, you know, I feel like compliments are just not a thing anymore. Like it's weird to tell somebody like, dude, you look good. Like you've been hitting the gym or like, like, oh, that's a sick haircut or something like that or new mm-hmm. pair like that where you know we got to do more of that we got to spread positivity and just be in that light in people's life even the ones that you know maybe used to treat me like shit or the ones that i hung out with and partied with all the time like you say see that version of you yep. them good is like what should be a mission to all of us and just being a light in each other's life because there's so much negativity in the world especially through covid with the way it works anymore um it's like we as humans seem to always look towards negativity just as a habit my yep. me, me included whether it's in my thoughts, whether it's in everything in general. So to be able to spread positivity just makes me feel good too. And, and be that guy that people want to hang around because you're spreading positivity. Yep. Yeah. Negativity and uh, backlash and all that. I mean, it's at everybody's fingertips with this fucking thing. And so it <laughs> life can get draining, but you just got to look past that shit, especially <laughs> Dylan's Twitter, Twitter bully, Twitter bullies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you meant like me bullying people. I was like, I don't know. Oh, no, no, no. Like, where's the guys bully you? No. <laughs> he had a couple of trolls or one of them try it. Yeah. I Dude, when I first got into Twitter and I had a couple of threads or videos pop off of what I was doing or a story or something, I have like when I'd see it the next day, I'd have to use the block button like 50 times. I'm like, what, like, what do you people have nothing better to do than just troll people, sit around and like find content to share? I actually on? have one right now. I, I've people, had a troll people. last week or so. Yeah. They like, just, but they follow me. Yeah. They, he literally asked me, he said, he's like, you block me so I don't see your generic ass tweets. I'm like, unfollow me, bro. <laughs> like, why do you follow me? And he's done it on like three things. I'm, I refuse to block him now. I'm like, if you don't like it, you can fucking unfollow me. <laughs> right. <laughs> Dude, the block button comes in so handy because it's like if you're in front of somebody in person, you're like stuck face to face with them. Like, you yeah, know, I'm one of them, the block button just right there. It's like, get the fuck out of here. That'd be cool <laughs> if you could block people in person, bro. That'd be wild. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was, uh, what was I? Yeah, I was walking the Katy Trail the other day and it was like jam packed. It's, it's a trail here in Dallas that people ride bikes on, walk, run, and uh, it's right outside my apartment complex and i'm walking and i'm just looking at everybody because there is every shape color size person there you'll see stuff like i saw a guy running in a fucking spider-man outfit he's just chugging along and i'm like what the hell is going on and i was like i envy people like him what do you they mean? don't give a fuck bro Not a fuck. you couldn't see his fuck. face or nothing either <laughs> um but i was like thinking i was like what if one day like how we know who somebody is or how we know what somebody is, is like, we're standing in a bar and we can just look and I'm looking at Dylan and it brings up like a stat sheet. He's this, this, this done this likes this likes that. And then you can go up and talk to him based off of if you like what his stat sheet says. And it's just like weird thinking like this world is changing so much technology. Right. I don't know who I want to avoid. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's what it would tell you. Piss that guy off. (laughs) But yeah, and so it just got me thinking because I was like, I wonder how many of these people, you know, would relate to what I'm doing or what I'm focusing on or what their story Way more is. than you think. I think that there's way more of a, like people like us out there who are vocal. Like there's not the stage where they can like express it because they are worried about other people thinking of them a certain way. Mm-hmm. I mean, for the longest, you, you were like this for the last few, I mean, fucking three, four years we've been talking like this. Yeah. But you were never like no one else would know. We just had personal conversations about it. Yep. So, I mean, there's a lot more people like that out there than you think. I've really noticed that too. Just trying to be that light, like you say, that positivity in people's life because Mm -hmm. spreading positivity to other people just feels even better back to you than it does to them. Yeah. To be able to see them kind of transform themselves a little bit and kind of get out of their bullshit in their own way really is just something cool to see transform when you look at it deep within it's like wow this person was so caught up in their shit they're so held together by their own deal or so negative and now just by bringing up one little thing that they can either relate to or you know that they've been wanting to talk about somebody just feels even better yeah i mean even i was like guilty of it after i started talking about it because i would only talk about it on twitter because i knew it was like a safe space i knew like people don't follow me here nobody fucking sees my shit over here 
So I was like, I can hide this from people in real life and be this way on Twitter. But then over here on Instagram or wherever else, I'm going to just keep living my life. And so like I was living these two parallel things, but you can only do that for so long. Like eventually Mm -hmm. one of them's catching up to the other one. Thankfully this one caught up with this one and uh, not the other (laughs) way around. But uh, yeah. So I think there is a lot of people like that just looking for that positivity or like even just the community. Cause I think that that is huge for a lot of us. Like it's yeah, all, everyone we've had on this podcast is connected in some way. Yep. And it, it just speaks to that community aspect. Yeah. I think that's what's important is, and what it's boiling down to is more people just want to see real stuff. They want to relate to people about real things. They want to talk about real life stuff, social media, as I preach all the time, it's a filter. I want to take, I want to take the filters off of life and show you what it really is. Tell the stories that are hard. Talk about the things that you went through and all of that stuff. Because at the end of the day, we're all sitting at home on the couch thinking of something, whether it's mental stuff, physical stuff, relationship stuff. We're all at the end of the day sitting on the couch like, all right, I could do this or this is weighing on my mind or fuck, I need a new job or whatever it is. And so us being able to vocalize and talk about it, I mean, has opened it up in the DMs to have conversations with people that are thanking us for preaching this message, saying it. And um, I think it's just everywhere in life. I mean, I hate going in an elevator and I am one of these people, but you go in an elevator and it is the most awkward thing. You all just stand there. You don't say a fucking word and then you get off and you go on with your day. And it's like, why don't I open my mouth knowing that it feels good to be like, Hey, how you doing? Or, Hey, your outfit looks nice. Like you said, giving compliments. Instead we sit there in silence and then the person goes off and it's like, who knows what that person's struggling with? Who knows what a nice, Hey, how's your day going? And a smile can do. I'm going to do better about that because I fucking hate the elevators because that's a question I've been trying to avoid though. Like I don't, I'm, I've been, I think giving a compliment would be better because you're going to get like an organic. If, if you walk in and say, Hey, how's it going? Somebody make fine. And that's it. That's the end of the conversation. You yeah, go in and you're like, dude, I fuck with that shirt. Like they're going to, they're yeah. going to start interacting. You know what I mean? So I've been trying to get away from the, Hey, how's it going? How's your day? Like in some way, like just bring up something that's yep. different just to kind of, I think we're so conditioned. Like people won't even say it. And I'll be like, good. You, and that's not even what they asked me. <laughs> I'm just so conditioned to respond that way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because even like you go out to the bars and you get a couple of drinks with your friends or you go out to dinner and like everybody's staying in their group, they're staying in this, but you got the friends in the group that don't have a relationship and they're like, man, that girl's really hot over there. Wow, she's really attractive, but doesn't go up and talk to them. And it's like, go and say hi, be all authentic. Don't be weird and just start mm-hmm. a conversation. But society has programmed us that that's intimidating. It's scary. I'm one of them. I will not do it. But I'll talk to anybody, bro. That's one thing I will do. I'll fucking... <laughs> go up and say some random shit i'm gonna get better at that i'm gonna try giving i'm trying gonna try and give that compliment or whatever to start a conversation in awkward settings or settings where it's not normal because we need to talk to each other this is what makes the world go around this is what keeps people going and so i'm gonna do better thank you guys for making me realize that. <laughs> hey that's what we're here for man <laughs> Dude, and that's what makes twitter just so like it's like separated from the pack when you get to this side of Twitter because everybody's so authentic. Everybody's so intentional when you meet them in real life and you see like, they're the same as they are on social media. Like it's, it's just so cool to see that because so many people are fake on social media. They aren't utilizing it as mm-hmm. a tool like we are to leverage ourselves, self-development, online business, whatever that may be. Yep. And to see like in person and have those compliments be given to you, whether it's in a DM or on, on a tweet or in person, you know, like, I see Dylan and he's, I'm like, Hey dude, that's a killer shirt or a new pair of shoes or something like that. And then he's giving it right back to me. And then it's like, we chop it up. Like you say, it's a good conversation starter. Yep. And um, it's how authentic it is. It's just so unreal. And I think me personally, I take it. I, I just get really grateful for it because I came from a place of friends where it's like, you know, as guys, you can shit on each other, but it's only funny for so long. You know, where, when, when you're going there and they're just shitting on you right away. And maybe it's just the toxic people I hung around with. Like, it just became so annoying and it, I hated it, but they're all I really had yep. in a small town until I got to college. So being able to be in a group of people that are giving genuine compliments without just being fake is just so awesome. That so, one's rough. Cause I still shit on my in-person friends. Yeah. <laughs> we do, we do. It's, bad. it's like there, there's a fine line where it was like, all right. Yeah. Cool. When people take yeah. shit like to a personal level, mm-hmm. I could take a lot, but uh, sometimes it gets a little far. <laughs> like me like once i get to know somebody like we're giving each other shit back and forth but we know like that line whereas yeah, yeah. Once i was around it was like they they crossed the line quite a bit and, and i, I got some of those 
there. But yeah, it was like one of the things where you just had to get away from that crowd. Yeah. Yep, definitely. You're a product of your environment, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You're the expectation of your peers. Matt likes to say it all the time in Elevate, dude. Like you're the expectation of them. They're the expectation of you. And that's what keeps you accountable. I like that. Keeps your, keeps your environment in check with like everything around you. You know, like yeah. he didn't drop that gem on the podcast, but he should have. He should have. I like that a lot. <laughs> there is some semi or bus or boat. I don't know what it is honking their horn so loud outside. Okay. Dude, I think so. this mic, it is this mic still. I don't understand what's no, going on. No, it's not. Here, bro. No, it you isn't. Know, I can only hear it through this one, though. I can't hear through that. Like, if I get closer to that one, it gets quieter for me. It gets louder for us. That's so weird, bro. <laughs> My computer is a piece of shit, man. <laughs> This is uh, also our first podcast where you're on the bottom. He's one of who, me or him? Yeah, you. Oh, I'm up on the top right in mine. Oh, you're on the bottom for mine, which means that's the way it's recording. All right. Well, there it is, baby. I'm the I'm the guest this week. <laughs> yeah, dude. Power bottom Freddy. <laughs> Dylan replace me. <laughs> yep. No, I'm in my normal spot. There we also go. Also replaced you. I'll, I'll allow that. He's a good guy. That's all I got, boys. Unless you guys want to bullshit about something else. I've back to telling ghost stories out here. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. I've I've enjoyed this. I definitely want to keep in contact just like we do with um, some of the others that are on this podcast because we're all on this journey together. We're all motivating each other. Um, obviously, hopefully we get to know each other on a more personal level now that Dylan introduced us and we keep growing this community and preaching this um, positive lifestyle, healthier lifestyle and um focusing on what's important in life. So I, I appreciate your story. I think there definitely, we could go deeper into a lot of things that we've discussed. Um, but again, I want, I want reoccurring guests so that way yeah. we can keep sharing. We'll be more comfortable next time we talk and all of that. Cause I've really enjoyed this time. Thank you for coming on and thanks for letting us take your uh, podcast virginity because it's been fun, man. You have a, a hell of a story. Um, and I know we only scratched the surface with it. So it's been awesome. Yeah, hundred percent. I'd love to come back on here anytime you guys want me to. I'll definitely dig more. Oh, yeah. Sorry, and give you guys the fine details. Freddie, yeah. uh, you got to link up with him too because he was asking about these bad boys. So you got to send him one. I'll get you one, baby. Dylan, put us in a group chat like you do all the time. And um, this I'll is actually the only text. number I don't have yet, so uh, we'll have to all get in a group chat. There we go. We'll do that after we hit record. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> all right, boys. Well, appreciate you coming on, man. We'll definitely be doing this again. Yes, sir. Remember, me too, bro. I had the desire to inspire everybody. Live the life that you want to live. Do it for you. Be happy with everything. And uh, if you're not happy, reevaluate things and make sure you're happy, baby. Life's too short.